Is this new? Okay, slower this time. Don't it's recognize performance. it. Action. In your illness, you were taken from me. Yet here I am, close to you. Closer than I have ever been before. I can look upon you without fear of reproach. Your perfect face. Your lips. Christ's example shows us that sacrifice test of devotion that the Lord can make of us. Open your lips. Got it. Cut. Go slate. Then Charlie, take two. I miss your apples, man. Fifteen apple, take two. He's back. <laughs> and action. Matilda? Matilda. Help! Call for the problems! Who saw me was fallen? What have you done? Are you cutting? Still rolling. Let's get this. Stop bloody improvising. She doesn't kiss him until scene 16. It's a martini. Let her have some fun. Sex you're out here on the floor. Cut. 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 Get the feeling that might have been part of why Fisher decided to kill the film. Maybe when Marissa and Jurek start to hook up as well. I need to sneeze really badly. <laughs> um, they were kind of going behind his back and I think he clearly he, he's got some issues with that kind of thing the improvising, the sexuality to understand, although he's making quite a sexual film in some ways um, Jur they have an interesting relationship Jurek, who is clearly into Marissa I don't know if they were a couple by this point in time but they probably were or at least considering it and he's like, yeah, let her have some fun you know, let's go for it <laughs> Uh, the martini shot, by the way, is the, the final shot of the day. In case you were curious. I'm assuming the reasoning behind that is you do the final shot and then you go get a martini, so. Bowl? Hello, Bowl. You're new. I'm the boss, Marissa. <laughs> Aww. Scene 18, rehearsal. Action. Bowl has betrayed me. Not for the first time. The real stuff. Now you know four of my names. I only know one of yours. <laughs> I came to collect some clothes and toast him goodbye. Frankie Aminsky. Both. What is this? Nothing sinister. Kinky, maybe. Just a little. He used to come here and we'd have sex. Where Minsky comes from, they didn't really do this. <laughs> it helped him to compartmentalize it. Did Minsky dress up too? Yes, he was the girl. Like all pictures, he was really a catcher inside. When he was fucking someone, he was only really fucking himself. Everything was about him. Did everyone know about Frankie? No. This was something he trusted me with. You ever wonder why he was so sure of you? He knew I loved him in my way. He told me you hated him. Yes. That too. Both. You want to understand how this worked? Trust me. What do you want me to do? Nice. 
Then we cut to Club 88 sequence. We're gonna need another bottle. Scene 30, rehearsal. Oh, we might have seen this one, actually. Heather, as Maria walks with her roller bag to her throng of paparazzi and adoring fans. Maybe off, yeah. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, we might have seen this one as well. No, we haven't. This is the gunshot. We, we haven't seen this one. This is the... This is the final scene. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing after this. Scene 84, rehearsal. Strange sight on the rooftop. In the pool, a writhing trio of bodies. Isabella is naked in the center with her two bodyguards. Everyone too absorbed at first to see the elevator door opening onto the roof. What the fuck? Play it, play it. You fucking monster. You're the monster. This is a bad dream, Maria. She tries to rush past, but Maria's no. open. Isabella turns and swims for the other side of the pool. Maria dives in and slices through the water like a bullet. Maria puts on the pressure, strangling her with her bare hands. Isabella's too weak to fight her off. Isabella's arms drop. Her eyes widen, a moment of clarity before her death. Ooh. Oh, you. Vibrating. This is who I am. I've had a lot of... Ooh. Oh, you. Once more around the clock. That's not a saying, but hey ho. I've had a lot of... It's really hard to do sometimes. You have to be so precise. Uh, it's just, the problem is with these like teeny tiny ones, you know? I've had a lot of time to think. I made up. I regret how I acted. I don't understand how you're here. You're not here. It's different. Amy did it. Amy's still here. Yes. I want to help you. Like all times. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how to do that. Oh, <laughs> I yeah. really don't. <laughs> that, Amy... She mentioned Amy, right? Who was Amy? Amy's come up before, like, in this video. I cannot for the life of me remember. In this bloody water, Maria is baptized. Ready to be reborn. She moves slowly. Sacred water sinks underwater and swims away. When she resurfaces in the shallow end, the blood from her crimes has been washed away. Her hair slicks down to her head. In the midst of the chaos, she is clean. She steps out of the pool like she's being reborn. She walks away, and we hear applause. Thank God. Right. Right, let me see. Many, first of all, I'm curious how many clips we've got. Let me zoom out as far as I can. That'd be easier. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. <clears throat> 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, 56, 64, 72, 80, 88. It is always 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 152 on the dot. So there's like 50 clips left <laughs> that we don't have somehow. How is that even possible, honestly? Alright, 18, 24, 32. What have we got the most of? It's Ambrosio. 
Yeah, it is by quite a large metric, I would say. Okay, I don't know what my plan is, if I'm honest. Um, I'd like to more to, two of everything feels the most important, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop around the the clacker for it. There we go. It's new. <laughs> okay, so the motion control rig is gonna play back what we do now. First, Naomi's gonna play Sarah. Amy, you play Anne. When we composite it, Naomi's performance will disappear. Story of my life. Barry, what do you uh, think of the dress? Swanky. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a vintage deal. Curious about this because I don't know who Barry is. Here we go, here we go. New clips abound, ladies Door. and gentlemen. Does it so what happened to Marissa Marcel? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is it this clip? Let's just watch this without the jumping through.
<laughs> um, okay, let's 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 talk about this. I suppose seems like a good idea. Um. Um. <laughs> right. So. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give what how I'm interpreting it, and then we're gonna have a little Google, I think, because I mean we're at the end now. We're gonna call it here. Um, we we found out what happened to Marissa Marcel. I suppose she was burned in a chair. <laughs> um, okay. I'm seeing this as a metaphor for burnout and for how the Hollywood system and fame and stuff kind of eats you up and spits you out, yada, yada, yada. And that I think, in a sense, that's maybe what the woman is representing because she is hopping from actor to actor to actress to actress to director to director, yada, yada, yada. Burning them up, like fueling them to create these works of art and then leaving them at the end. And I'm assuming what happened to Marissa, I don't think she's meant to be dead here. I don't think that's what it's implying. I'm thinking it's implying she's burned out, it's the end of her as an actress, and her muse, her creative verve, i.e. the woman who hops around the bodies, in a sense, inverted commas, is leaving her. And that's why we see her approach the camera. First, she's shaky and scared and nervous and worried, and I think that's her burning up inside Marissa and leaving, and then she gets closer to the camera and she says, I see you. I think the point being, you know, that we're next and that she's going to jump into what's next. Um, that's how I'm interpreting it. Now, I'm going to have a little Google. Immortality ending explained. I want to see if anyone said anything and we'll talk about that. I still don't know what happened to Carl. Well, this is going to tell me annoyingly. Uh, story unfolds non-linear. Countless spooky clips. The one and the other one. Uh, who are the creepy blonde man and woman? The two creepy blonde people who appear in the subverse scenes are the one and the other one. They can be seen as demons, entities, or muses. Have existed for thousands of years, if not forever. They are parasitic, capable of devouring their hosts. Yada, yada, yada. The one is fascinated by humanity. Wants to explore its extremities like sex, violence, and art. Yeah, basically said that. And being Marissa and performing in cinema is how she does it. Even though she and the other one are parasitic, the one builds up a certain affinity towards humanity, which could explain why she oscillates so often between weepy and creepy during her scenes. Because she knows what she's meant to be doing. Maybe they are meant to be supernatural beings, but they are clearly meant to be metaphorical as well. Um, Throughout the game, the one and the other one devour two people each. The one devours Marissa and John Jurek. Yeah, we knew that, kind of. The other one devours Carl Greenwood and Amy Archer. Oh... See, I didn't pick. Oh, of course he did. We see, like we've seen him repeatedly take up Amy's form recently. Amy Archer being the woman who just set Marissa on fire. Um, whatever their species, we know there used to be many more of the others, but by the time humanity came along, there's only a few of them, or just two of them. The last two remaining muses of Greek tradition, of which there were nine total. I just want to know about the fire. Bear with me. Uh. Oh, I've missed some stuff here. Right, we saw the ending, but there's some been some important things. Okay. Another key event that happened during the filming Minsky is that Marissa the One reveals her true self to John, who doesn't take so positively to the idea that he's convorting with some kind of parasitic demon. Oh, right. Okay, so... She took over John Jurek and then they came back at the end. Sorry, this probably doesn't make much sense. I recommend people Google this as well. Um, I'm just trying to find something about the fire. I 
Once you watch enough clips, you'll eventually discover what's called the final scene, with the one no longer able to live through Marissa, and with John gone, she expresses a desire to become immortalised by dying on screen like the other one did previously. Amy, the other one, douses Marissa in gasoline and sets her alight. Okay, so we've missed a little bit of context, but I don't really want to hop around a billion clips, so I'm going to talk to you about it. <laughs> um, so what happened with Carl Greenwood is actually, funnily enough, very apt, because it happened recently with um, uh, Alec Baldwin on the set of a film. Anyway, it's basically a prop gun went off incorrectly and killed someone, and killed Carl, basically. I'm going to see if I can find the clip. I'm going to see if I can find the clip. Um... How to get Carl Greenwood death clip. <laughs> uh, blah, 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 blah. I just, it'd be nice to watch, like, if there's a couple, like, major ones. Um, Okay, here we go. How to find every clip in Immortality. Because it, it could take a while of hopping around a billion things, right? And there's 202 clips. Jesus Christ. No, there's just, this is just a list of it. No, this is useless. Um, okay, here we go. Well, bear with me. <laughs> How to find three of the best clips. I think you just have to keep clicking over and over again. Okay, I think we can find the Carl one now. Uh, a gun or the color red? Have I seen a gun? Oh yeah, we saw a gun. Ah, we just saw a gun. Um, better we just see that it was in the in the in the audition thing here. Which was the gun one? This one? No. That one. No. That one. Okay, let's, let's give this a go. Apparently, there's only three. Scene eighty four rehearsal. So this should in theory be super easy. I can't believe I didn't think about it. We don't see many guns. <laughs> okay, here we go. Scene 27, golf, take two. So it's either this one or there'll be another right. one. That oh, and for. if anyone bangs on the door at night, scare them off with this. Oh, we did see a gun. This in the rehearsal for this scene. But this is two of everything. This isn't Minsky. There must be another one. Cut. Maybe there wasn't a gun uh. in the other scene. Okay, so it's got to be this one. Bitch. Okay, there's clearly more guns than that, that person was lying to me. <laughs> Let me just favorite that, because that's me. Shit. What the fuck? Gun, take me where I want to be, please. You could kill some... Oh, we did see it. Yeah, okay, there's clearly more than two clips, and the internet's lying to me. Here we go, here we go. Oh, this is Minsky. I'm a little nervous. Wait, why can't I favorite this one? Or any of them. It's all broken. Whoa, whoa! What the hell? Hello? Um. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. <laughs> Hi. I'm just gonna cover your entire face, but wait, why am I doing it like this? Oh. I'm part of you now. Um. Right, what's that Minsky clip I wanted? Uh, oh, this is gonna be a pain in the ass. Um, get us some food. Must be around here. Is that it? I think that might be it. Seventeen A, take one. Action. She keep convincing people that she's a man with the worst mustache in the world. No! Come on, come on, there we go. I'm gonna shoot him. It's us or them. Do it. Oh. You chose them. I chose me. You never watched me die.
she saw that they're Kree maidens. Bear with me. She saw that they cremated me. Come on. When it's a tiny little gap, it's really hard to get into sometimes. Ah! Oh, excuse me. She Come saw on. that they cremated me. I was hoping I could just let that play out, but... Um. She saw that they cremated me. Maybe it's not going to play out a full clip. Maybe it's just... Oh, no, I'm not feeling like a biting point. We'll get there, folks. Give me a minute. <laughs> she saw that they cremated me. Oh, thank God for that. But I didn't dare. An infinity of nothing. And then... Okay, but even more. Come on, come on, beautiful. Nothing. What is that? Is it just his eye? I'll find it. Ah, whew. hard work, Tanya. Watched him die on the screen. And I was reborn. Do you have a gun capable of firing in the first place, right? I just want to see how we got there. Have a look in there, bottle of champagne, she attacks, ba ba. There we go. Not a used thing. Frankie Centora? That's a weird reaction, isn't it? To, it? She says it so calmly. It just went off because, right, okay, I know why. Okay, so that was a very important clip. <laughs> we can tie it all together now. So, at least I think we can. So that's what happened to Carl. The prop gun went off and he, he got shot and he died, which is quite sad. Um, okay, so here's how I understand it. They are, I think they are meant to be literal beings. I think they do exist. They're obviously metaphors still for all the things I've said. All the things i said. Anyways. Um, but they are still literal beings. And they are parasitic creatures that live in a host body, right? And um, they've been hopping around the bodies over generations, as we've, you know, talked about many times before. And... They both have, I think the idea is that they were from an ancient race or something. They were here before the humans, but now they've started to die out. Oh, there's a pigeon outside. 
Well, it's very wet outside, though. You need to get some cover, Mr. Pigeon. Anyways, so they've been dying off, and there's maybe only these two left, these, these parasitic body-swapping hosts, right? And, um... Yeah, so they both have, like, a disdain for humanity. Maybe... Yeah, we know that. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. Maybe humanity's evolution, humanity taking over the planet, kind of eradicated their species inadvertently. All right? So they have, like, a disdain for humanity of some description. There's the one and the other one. I'm going to call it the guy and the girl. Um, God, look at all these achievements. Oh, my gamer score! <laughs> um, so they have a disdain for humanity, especially the guy... The girl also does. You can see her every now and again. She knows they're meant to be parasitic and feed off these hosts, essentially. But clearly embodying all these directors and actresses and stuff like that, she also has developed a fondness for humanity. And she wants to explore all the facets of what being human means. Or the extremities, as I said, the sex, violence, power, fame, yada, yada, yada. Um... So, she eventually takes over Marissa. Did she take over John first? That's what I need to think about. It is Marissa, right? She definitely takes over Marissa. Um, and then the other one takes over... Car. Yeah, right. So, in the. Let's just focus on Minsky. During Minsky, the girl has control of Marissa, or she's embodying Marissa. And the guy is embodying Carl. Right? Um, and I think the guy. You heard him then. He said, you know, it's us or them, blah, 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 blah. And I think he. With his disdain for humanity, is suggesting, you know, let's kill them, let's eat them, let's move on to the next host, yada, yada, yada. Whereas. This woman, the girl, has built quite an affinity for Marissa and likes the directing and likes the acting and likes that kind of life. So she, instead of going with her partner, and they are clearly romantically entwined of some description, however that works for their species, she decides instead to kill him and kill his host and move on. Because he is in Carl at this point in time. As we've seen in several scenes, he replaces Carl in the scenes. And as we saw just then, he's the one who got shot on the couch, right? Was the guy with the slip back hair. He was embodying Carl. So I think that's probably why Marissa seems so calm. Is that it, was, it wasn't it was Marissa at that point in time, in a way. It was the, the woman, the spirit, the, the parasite inside her that made her shoot. Because by killing Carl, she also killed... Maybe what they have to do is you have to leave the host before the host dies naturally or something like that. Anyways, she killed Carl and therefore killed him. And we heard him earlier in the video say that he's died before or something like that. He, he mentioned coming back, right? So, the other one is dead. And um, the lass jumps out of Marissa and she goes into John Jurek. Apparently there's a clip. I don't have it, but there's an interview with... Jerick. I say I don't have it, there we go. <laughs> well, I am excited to see this new movie. Well, you have to tell me what you think. Yeah, it must feel like a, a new start for you. <laughs> can, uh... It does vibrate. Can you... Can you... Well, I'm sure everybody's read about... Ah! I've never heard the gossip. I was making a movie in New York. Your first as director? Yes, I'd done quite a bit of work as uh, director of photography at that point, but this was my first. It would have been a superb movie. Well, there was an accident on set, and uh, one of the actors, Carl Greenwood, was unfortunately injured and later died. And after that, we felt it was in everybody's best interest that we stop the movie. Oh, you decided not to finish. This was also a movie that starred Marissa Marcel, and I gather put a stop to her career. They say she's become a recluse. <laughs> I don't want to speak for Marissa, but I think recluse might be inaccurate. Just because she chooses not to court to celebrity just makes her normal. I don't think she disappeared or anything. She just um, 
chose a different life. Have you uh, met with Marissa since that movie? I have not. Okay. Well, we're going to go to a short commercial here, and when we come back, we're going to have some amazing new music. Okay, cool. Right, that helps. So, yes, she, at some point, leaves Marissa and goes into Jurek, right? And I think that's actually why Marissa disappears, to an extent. I think, at this point, the parasitic nature might go both ways, to an extent, and that, basically, by leaving Marissa, she... Um, Marissa essentially ceases to exist. And again, if we want to get metaphorical with that, it's that Marissa was so driven by her artistry and by her acting and by her talent and by that pursuit that when she loses it, she essentially ceases to exist as a human being. Which actually, interestingly enough, might be the point that in Hollywood, if a young actress loses their... You know, it's a, it's a big problem in Hollywood with films and stuff like that, in that as actresses age, they get less and less roles because people don't want to hire older women if you're not called Judy Dench or Helen Mirren, basically. Um, so it's probably to an extent a commentary on that as well, in the way that Hollywood happily discards young actresses when they feel they've served their purpose, right? Anyways, off topic ish. Um, so I think Marissa, I don't know if she literally ceases to exist, but in terms of the game and in terms of the public eye and in terms of Hollywood, she ceases to exist. She's off no more use. And the creature has sort of left her behind for now. At the same time, as we saw, Amy, I can't remember Amy's last name, but Amy is the dark head lass from uh, Two of Everything, right? The wife. She, as an actress, I think, let me think about this. I know I was reborn. I think she sees the clips somehow. Oh, wait, wait, she's with Jurek, right? Her and Jurek get together. So I think Jurek probably showed her the clips from Minsky including the clip where Carl gets shot. And at that point, the other one, the guy, the boy, <laughs> he jumps into Amy, right? He takes over Amy instead. Because we've seen him, he is Amy. Throughout Minsky, throughout Two of Everything, he's in Amy's body. Um, And I think, as it mentioned, Fisher came and showed the clips to... So Marissa must still exist. Yeah, that's interesting. Unless you showed them to Jurek. Hmm. At some point, <clears throat> the lass jumps back into Marissa, right? Marissa comes alive again. She's reborn. Um, and two of everything starts being filmed. Now, I believe what's going on at this point is that the one, the woman, is inhabiting both Jurek and Marissa. And that's why they both, we see them both collapse, don't we, at one point? They both start to suffer. They both clearly become on edge. And I think the idea is that they're being torn apart from the inside. Like, the one is trying to inhabit two people at the same time. Because she's grown attached to both these people. She's been Jurek for 20 years. She was Marissa and she loved being Marissa. Because she saw those clips of Ambrosio and it kind of inspired her to be Marissa again. And that's just tearing her apart. Trying to inhabit both of these forms at the same time is ripping her apart. And that's why we see... Marissa starts to bleed dramatically from her head and stuff like that. It's that she's being ripped apart from the inside by this 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 uh, this being inside her and inside Jerk. And I guess that's why Jerk disappears. If you remember, at the end of Two of Everything, Marissa was the one directing the scenes. Um, I think the creature probably just left Jerk behind at that point. I don't know what happens to them. Maybe they just disappear into the void when they're left behind, but... You know, she had no more use for Jurek. She just inhabited Marissa. But Marissa was clearly dying anyway. And at this point, obviously, Amy is still the other one. Now, they clearly have a conflict, right? I mean, she killed her. <laughs> she killed him. And then that final scene with the burning, which seemed to happen... I mean, it was on film, yada yada, but the clapper just said... Clapper, not clacker. The clapper just said Marissa Marcel. It's like the end of her story. It's the story of Marissa Marcel. And she was set alight. The one, the, the woman, was set alight by the man, by the other one, right? Because he was controlling Amy. She was controlling Marissa. So I think the point is that they had, that she had to leave Marissa behind shed that body and Marissa and again I think it's tying into fame and the hunger for that and power and legacy and all that kind of stuff 
in that Marissa needed to achieve immortality. And by burning up on that last frame, she kind of does that. She's kind of etched into history. She is immortal in that way. She died on film. Um, I think there's probably a commentary here about how we as viewers, because I think there's a meta element to this for sure, that we as viewers are observing Marissa's last moments and that we, like, obviously her films were never shown to the public before, so she never had that before, but now we as viewers kind of grant her that immortality by viewing her films in a way. You know how it is. Films make you immortal, in a sense, because you, you know, you're not erased. There's lots of incredible actors and actresses who've died over the years. Same with music and same with anything. Well, all things, even architecture, or writing, streaming on Twitch to an extent. You know, you look at What's his name? Elkinen? Elkinen? I can't remember. The Twitch streamer who died a few years back. I feel very sad. Um, has that meme made of him and there's loads of you know, people reference him all the time still because he was kind of immortalised in that. Uh, we are all immortalised in our own way. Most of us, I know. You'd hope so. It's interesting to think about what you'd be immortalised as. Like, if you died right now, what would people remember you for? You know what I mean? Not enough. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so. She becomes immortalised. He. I, I think to an extent gets his revenge I guess. But I, like by killing her in return. But they both kind of move on. And she. As in the woman who was inhabiting Marissa. And now that Marissa has been. Shed essentially. Is now in us instead. We become the next host and we are inspired creatively and we'll tell the story for this creature and then eventually we'll disappear into the ether as well when she's done with us. So, better make it a good story, eh? It's a heavy game. <laughs> it's pretty bloody heavy. <laughs> I think it would be very easy to play this game and not really care about any of this stuff, but I think if you talk about it and try to discuss what's going on, at least attempt to on a deeper level, I'm not going to claim that I'm getting everything in any stretch of the imagination. I may be way off base, but I think it is inherently a fairly interpretive art form in that you could see a lot of different things from this if you wanted to. There's a lot of stories, there's a lot going on, um, and there's a lot of different ways to to interpret what happens, which I think is probably at least slightly on purpose. I really enjoyed it. Did I enjoy it as much as her story? I don't know. Um, I don't love the image scrubble effect. Um, at the end of the day, it didn't really matter that much. There was a couple of clips that we needed to find. And obviously, there's like 50 clips we haven't seen. <laughs> but in terms of the important stuff, I feel we've kind of got that. Um, I feel like everything's been rounded out pretty well. I'm very curious what those other 50 clips are, because it's a quarter of the game. But at this point, now that we know basically everything that goes on, it would feel a bit daft to go around and try to get this over 50 clips. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm pretty happy with where we're going to leave it. But, uh, yeah. That's to say, really. Madness, right? Madness. Well, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Thank you very much for joining me for this playthrough, as wild as it has been. Um, I'd be very curious to hear your thoughts and interpretations and where you've gone with all this and how it makes you feel and all that. Um, this, to me, again, is a fantastic example of what gaming can be as a medium. It's something that you just couldn't do with any other medium whatsoever. Um, and this is definitely the kind of experience I want to seek out on this channel a little bit more. You know, this kind of weird stuff basically just indie things weird things um unusual experiences because i think that's inherently a very exciting thing and uh i really enjoyed this hope you have too right thank you very much for joining me i'll see you lovely folks very soon cheers much of as always